Hi everyone, we tried to find some information on descaling one of these shower boilers, you know, instant heat jobs, and we couldn't find any information at all on the net or YouTube on how to actually descale one of these boilers. So this happens to be a Triton Cara, 10.5 kilowatt, um, and here's roughly what it looks like inside. They're all very similar. Um, You've got your boiler, you've got your controls, you've got your temperature cutout switch on the top, you're, and obviously all your wiring. Now I suggest when you take these apart, you um, take a photograph of all the wiring, and then uh, you're going to be able to get it all back in the same place that it came from. Uh, you don't want to make any mistakes. The currents in these wires are, are heavy, and uh, you you could have an accident if you wire it up incorrectly. Uh, you've got your temperature cutout switch on the top here, your boiler, this is where the output comes out to the shower head, so we'll just take that off. Your input to the boiler comes from the controls here, this is where the cold water comes in, and that's roughly how it works. Uh, I suggest when you undo these or do these terminals up, uh, you are very careful to hold these in a pair of pliers so that you're not trying to just undo these against the um, the tags themselves. Hold the tags in a pair of pliers and then unscrew them because you don't want to bend any of this uh, uh, stuff going into the top of the boiler. And... Uh, so I would suggest when you're either doing them up or undoing them, you hold those in a pair of pliers first. Okay, so there's your temperature switch. Now this is the thing that tells you when the boiler's going wrong in the first place. Uh, your boiler cuts in, cuts out, cuts in, cuts out. You start getting cold water when there should be hot water, and then it resets and you... Uh, that's when you know something's going to happen. Uh, the the switch is slightly cleverer than it looks because it's got two biometal strips uh, discs in it, and uh, the first one is resettable, so that's why it resets when it cools down again. And the second bi biometal disc, which is behind this one, won't reset. Once it goes, that's it and you no more get any power to the boiler and therefore you get no heat. Uh, that This is a safety feature of these things. Uh, so you get the first warning, which is when the first biometal strip goes at about 60 degrees, uh, which would be a pretty blooming hot shower. Uh, the second one goes uh, when it reaches 80 degrees, which is dangerous. So that's why it won't reset. Now I'll just give you a close-up of this to show you this one I've taken apart. Uh, if I can just get this to give it a bit more light to refocus. Uh, so you can see you've got to take this top off and make sure you get all the bits back in the right uh, order and you reset the bimetal second bimetal disc by hand inside and then put it back together again. I'm not going to tell you how to do it in detail because uh, there seems very little point. You can buy one of these. They cost about 20 quid from the manufacturer, about 10 quid from eBay. And uh, if you're not competent enough to uh, do a repair on it, then don't do it. Just buy another one. Okay, so now to the boiler itself, which is the uh, the problem. I think the the failure is because the boiler fills up with um, with uh, calcium from the coils, which gradually drops off to the bottom of the boiler uh, through the life of the boiler itself. Which this one's about eight to ten years old. Could be more than that actually. Um, yeah, it's about fifteen years old. So um, uh, it's lasted pretty well, uh, and obviously the first thing you do is you take the boiler out. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Um, 
Uh, here are all the terminals on the top in more close up. This is where your temperature switch goes. And here are the terminals. These are the ones you shouldn't, mustn't bend, obviously. Uh, what happens is that the, the scale falling from the two heating coils which are inside here gradually falls down and starts filling up the bottom of the boiler. And when that happens, eventually you get enough crap in the bottom of the boiler to start burying the bottoms of the coils. This is what I imagine happens. Uh, and uh, when that happens, uh, obviously, uh, because the coils aren't in free circulating water, they will start to boil at the bottom here very quickly. That will heat will transfer up to the top here and then set off your safety switch. So I think that's the mode of failure. Obviously, when you take this out, measure the um, ohmic resistance between here and here and here and here, and you should have. Uh, depends what sort of boiler it is, but you, these, this particular one had a resistance of about 10 and 10.1 ohms and 12 ohms. So that's where you get your two heating coils. And um, obviously, if you can't get an ohmic resistance between any of these uh, connections, uh, the boiler's duff and uh, you might as well throw it away. Uh, if you replace one of these, uh, it costs about 50 to 60 quid. So really that's the end of the life of the whole shower. Uh, you might as well chuck it all in the bin and start again with another one. They're about a, a hundred quid-ish. And uh, if, uh, if it gets to that stage, I don't think it'll be worth putting an, you know, taking all the trouble to get the crap out of the boiler. But if you've got prop, your, your connections are working well, uh, then obviously the boiler's perfectly all right. It's just full of crap in the bottom here. Uh, you can't just um, empty it out of this hole at the bottom because uh, the, this is a tube that goes through the middle of the boiler up to the top. So the Hot water comes from the top of the boiler, as you would expect, uh, straight out to the shower head. Uh, so you can't get any crap out of there. Uh, the only, your only exit or entrance to the boiler to get rubbish out of is through the filling department. So that is about six or seven millimeters. Some of the bits of crap will be so big that you can't get them out. Uh, some you can get out straight away uh, by just um, sticking an airline up the kazoo, uh, tipping it on its side, and blowing like hell and shaking it at the same time. Uh, and that's a pretty good way of getting stuff out. Now, when I did that, uh, I started off with a weight of 727 grams. And uh, by the time I'd done that, I'd got 20 grams of rubbish out. So that worked reasonably well, but then eventually the tube just, you can't get any more bits out because the, the bits are too big and they're stuck in the boiler. You can hear them rattling around, but you can't get them out. So then you've got to get it out with acid or descaler of some sort. Uh, if you haven't got an airline, then you're going to have to do it all with acid and descaler, and you're probably going to have to put quite a lot through it, uh, but I'll show you how I did it, and um, you can make your own decisions depending on what equipment you've got available. So this is what where your stuff comes out. Uh, I'll just show you quickly what the grit looks like. Uh, take some light off there. So this is it. Uh, this is about 10 grams in this um, uh, this gauze filter. Uh, I, by the time I'd finished, we got uh, about 14 times this amount out. Uh, so uh, there's an awful lot of stuff 
in the bottom of the boiler and that's why it uh, starts packing up. So there you go. Hi, I've gone over my 15 minutes so I'm going to have to split this into two uh, parts. So uh, this is going to be the end of part one in a second. I just thought uh, because the uh, temperature switch was slightly out of focus earlier on I'd just um, show you a slightly better picture of it. Um, obviously you can test this by uh, these two terminals here. They should be a short circuit um, at normal room temperatures. Uh, if they're open circuit then the uh, inner disc has popped and you can tell anyway because uh, the, the, the discs are loose. You can hear them shaking um in the unpopped position if you uh, once it's popped these go solid and you this disc can't be moved anymore uh, so uh, that's the uh, end of part one and uh, i couldn't really shorten the video to under the 15 minutes because it would have taken out um, useful information so there we go so end of part one